you can see they're sitting over like this. So I want to move all that back. It is frame rail Friday. I have a 2018 Toyota Highlander here. This one got smoked in this side and pushed both frame rails over. I don't know if you could tell, but you can see they're sitting over like this. This one, I'm gonna straighten. I'll be able to put in clamps, do some measurements, and I'll be able to pull this one back square. But this side actually buckled. You can see right here where it buckled the frame rail. There's no way to properly fix that. So it has to get a new frame rail. And this is how the new frame rail comes. Just like so. Then it also gets a new radiator support. Just like that. As well as some other smaller parts like this side plate right here. And then it also gets this end cap on this side replaced. I am first going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in clamps, get it clamped down, tied down to the frame bench, and then I'll do some measurements, see where everything's at. Now they have measurements where they want these clamps positioned. And this rear one, you go off the center of the rear wheel here. This rear one is 620 millimeters. So I'm gonna scoot this back a little bit. The front one is 2,055 millimeters. It's gonna be right about there. All right, time to set up the measuring system. This is our measuring turtle. It slides around on this track underneath here. Now I have to take five points in the center section of the vehicle, and I go to those and that will match the measuring system to the vehicle. So then it will know exactly where the vehicle's sitting, and then I could come up here and make my measurements at these damaged frame rails and see how far off they are and where I need to move them too. So you probably won't be able to see it, but my first point is going to be right here. Then this will be my second point. Then I'll go to, to the same two on the other side, and then I'll pick one more. Now, I will come up here to the front, and I'll be able to see how far off everything is. There are about 70 millimeters knocked over, which is about three inches. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my pulling ram on here and I'm gonna go ahead and square these up, get them where they're supposed to be. I gotta get this one perfect because this one I'm not cutting off. And this frame rail I also wanna get close because everything that's attached to it, even though it's getting replaced, everything that's attached to it is moved as well. So I wanna move all that back because all this apron and everything, if I just cut it off, all that will still be pulled over as well. And then I'll have a problem with fitting everything together. So I wanna pull and square everything up first. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bolt this bumper bar, the old one back on here. That way it ties both frame rails together. So when I pull, it'll move them together. And I should be able to get it close that way. I might have to tweak them individually but I'll get it close just this way, pulling it all together. 
then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lock this on one of the points and do a live pull so I can kind of watch it as I pull it. And then I'm gonna put this at a down angle at the same time because this one needs to come down while it comes over. I have this over pulled by about 24 millimeters. You have to over pull it and then it's gonna relax and come back. Now that was almost perfect. We're at two millimeters, which is within tolerance, but I gotta check some other points as well. This one's been a little bit of a pain in my ass. As I'm pulling these frame rails over, it's actually moving this perch right here, which is where the engine cradle mounts, one of the points. It's moved, it's moved this too far over and this not enough so i put another ram on here and i'm gonna grab this and pull it this way a little bit while i pull the frame rail that way so i kind of got to go like this and tweak it that way a little bit getting it close I'm gonna go ahead and cut this lower tie bar in half just to separate the two rails from each other now because I think that one's kind of fighting me so <laughs> this is right where it's supposed to be so I'm just gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna try to tweak this just a few more see what that did. I have this frame rail right about where it's supposed to be. Double check my measurements. Now this side's good. I'm gonna go ahead and this side this needs to move over another 22 millimeters still. However I gotta stop this from moving same type of thing. If this side doesn't have to be perfect I just want to get it close. close. So I'm gonna do the similar type of thing. I'm gonna grab this and then pull the frame rail right there. I think we're looking really good. I'm gonna check it one more time. Now this one's measuring out perfectly. Everything's within three millimeters, which is the tolerance you have to work with. Now technically, if somebody wanted to, they could put this car together and everything would fit correctly since everything's squared up but with this buckle in the frame rail a lot of people unfortunately there's a lot of shops that would do that and leave this because you won't see it but the structural integrity of this frame rail is not the same anymore with this buckle in it and it could cause the airbag timing to be off so if it got hit again it's not going to collapse the same way it was designed and it could cause the timing of the airbags to be off so that's why we have to replace this cut this out and replace it because it's all all the structures factored into the safety of the vehicle as well that wasn't as much so the case on older cars 20 years ago but it's a big deal now
I got this one all trimmed out and cleaned up. I'm gonna roughly set this frame rail in place. Get a couple more clamps. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna mark where all my welds are so I can clean off down to bare metal on the frame rail. And then I'll also go ahead and drill my other holes in the frame rail where it gets plug welded in. Get the frame rail all prepped out. I got this frame rail sitting up in here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start measuring it. I wanna measure everything out and make sure this frame rail is sitting exactly where it's supposed to still. I have a new end cap on this one and then I wanna make sure this one's sitting exactly where it's supposed to and I can shift it around if I need to. Then once I get it all measured out and make sure everything's exactly where it needs to be, I will go ahead and start welding this frame rail on in. So, to go ahead and match the measuring system to the vehicle so it knows where exactly where the vehicle is sitting. So I have to go to five points in the center of the vehicle and that will match the measuring system to the car. Then it will know exactly where the car is sitting and I can check my points up front. Now, I could come up here to the front and make some measurements and see where everything's at. So I got this one fitting exactly like it's supposed to, it's measuring out perfectly. I went ahead and I put this on here to lock this in place so it doesn't move at all. It's locked down to the frame rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start welding this guy on in. I have the frame all finished up. I'm gonna get onto the radiator support. I'm gonna get this prepped out for all my welds and get it fit up.
Well, this radiator support is fitting up very nicely. It actually kind of sits in pockets. I'm gonna do some comparison measurements from side to side. And it X's out perfect, so that means it's square. Now I'm gonna do some length measurements. And the length is just about perfect. And I've also done a few other ones already. So we are in really good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this radiator support all welded in. Then this one will be ready for the paint shop to come over and paint all of this. So I got this one down off of the frame rack. Now I have both these fenders that gets repair work in this front corner, kind of around the headlight. So I want to fit everything up because I want to know that these front corners are correct where they meet up to the headlight. So I'm going to fit all the parts up and straighten these out. So I'm getting everything fit up on this and the headlights and fenders and hood are all fitting nicely. I have a nice gap on both sides. So I'm gonna pull the headlights back out and I'm gonna do a little bit of glaze work on both of the sides of these fenders. So I thought I was about ready for primer, but I was running my hand across this and there's actually like a knot right here, probably from everything shifting whenever it got hit. It must have twisted this fender and I didn't notice that until just now. 
so I'm gonna have to go ahead and I'm gonna put a thin and glaze coat. I'm gonna tap down the knot. You can't see it, but I can feel it. And I'm gonna put a thin and glaze coat right there to finish this fender out. This is 3M Cavity Wax, and I'm gonna spray this. It sprays in a 360 degree pattern, and I'm gonna put it inside this frame rail, and I'll coat all of the inside of this, and it'll protect any bare metal or all the seams inside of there, keep it from rusting out.